Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to study a new series. We saw the geometric series before. This one is an equally, equally important series, a very historic one, a very fascinating one, a very wonderful one. Uh, and this, it has this form, okay. Summation 1 by n power q, okay. And q is some integer, you can take it as uh, 1, 2, 3, so on, okay. Minus 1 also is okay, 0 also is okay. So, some integer q, okay, 1 by n power q. So, why is this fascinating? It's a very simple series, you know, uh, you think of, you know, 1 by n uh, as a very fundamental series and sequence that we've seen before. So, we should be able to say something about how, what, how this series behaves. And you'll see the comparison test, comparison with geometric series will be the main ingredient in proving convergence and divergence for this series. So, let's get started, okay. The simplest of these series 1 by n power q is just 1 by n itself. This has a special name, it's called the harmonic series summation 1 by n, okay. The main, main result which is perhaps very surprising to a lot of people is that summation 1 by n which is 1 plus 1 by 2, uh, but by the way, uh, the one thing I'm not putting here is where does n start, okay. At this point, it's not too critical, but nevertheless, you can always imagine n will start at 1 or 0 or something like that. Uh, so, in this case, n starts at 1, okay, 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot 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 diverges, okay. So, this is a very, very surprising result. A lot of people get confused by this because the sequence 1 by n converges to 0, right. Every term here is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. 1 plus, you know, 1 by 2 is smaller than 1, 1 by 3 is smaller than 1 by 2, 1 by 4 is smaller than 1 by 3. The steps you are adding are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Somehow, they all, when they add together, they become so big that it diverges, it does not converge, okay. So, it is a very fundamental and important result in the area of series and it is also fascinating in some sense, right. So, how even if you add a smaller and smaller and smaller quantity which is actually tending to 0, the sum may actually diverge, okay. So, this shows you that you have to be cautious with series. Even though the sequence is converging, the series corresponding to it may not, may not converge, right. Even if the sequence is converging to 0, the series corresponding to it may not converge. So, this is a very, very surprising and very interesting result and the proof for this is through a comparison test, comparison with geometric. It is a little bit involved. I am going to combine a lot of terms together and write some expression. I will try and keep it as simple as possible, but even if you do not understand the proof step by step, uh, it is okay. I think the important idea is that uh, the series diverges, okay. So, here is the proof, it is a simple comparison test, but I am going to group the terms together to make my comparison work better. So, how am I grouping it? 1 plus 1 by half, I will keep as it is, not doing anything. The 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4, I will sort of group together, okay. So, I will keep this as one first group. Second group is 1 by 5 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 8. Notice where I am stopping, I am stopping at 4 here, 3 to 4, I am stopping at from 5 to 8 here. The next group is 9 to 16. What is the next group? 17 to 32, right. See, the, this, this part is increasing. Here, there are only two members in a group. Here, they became four members. Here, it became eight members. The next group will have 16 members, okay. And it will start from 17 to 32. The next will have 32 members. It will start from 33 to 64 and so on and so on. Every time the group membership doubles and it goes to the next power of two, okay. So, that is what happens here in the nth such group, I will start from 2 power n plus 1 and go all the way to 2 power n plus 1. And this will keep on going infinitely, okay. This group will become larger and larger and larger, keep on blowing up in bigger and bigger ways, but it will keep, keep on going like this, okay. So, this needs a little bit of visualization. I hope the smaller things here, smaller examples here help you picture what happens here. So, there are 2 power n terms here, 2 power n plus 1 all the way to 2 power n plus 2 power n. 2 power n plus 2 power n is the same as 2 power n plus 1, okay. So, it, it, it goes all the way to the, the previous power of n plus 1 to the next power of n, power, sorry, previous 2 power n plus 1 to the next 2 power n, okay. That is that's what happens here, okay. So, now I am going to construct another series which is going to be below this and going to diverge. Okay, so that is the key idea, the comparison test, that is how we prove divergence, right. You have to find a series which is below this, positive and it diverges, okay. So, here is the trick, it is very, very nice and elegant. I am going to keep 1 and half as it is, it does not really matter. So, here this, instead of 1 by 3, I am going to make it 1 by 4. So, you notice here, instead of 1 by 3, I am going to make it 1 by 4, so it goes below. 
Likewise here in all these four terms, I am going to replace each of the terms by 1 by 8. So, I am going below only 1 by 4, 5 goes down to 1 by 8, 1 by 6 goes down to 1 by 8, 1 by 7 goes down to 1 by 8. But I keep all of these things same, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 8. Likewise here also, every term gets replaced by 1 by 16, the largest term here. So, everything goes down. I have 16 of them, I am sorry, I have 8 of them and all of them become 1 by 16. I have 4 of them here, all of them became 1 by 8. I have 2 of them, all of them become 1 by 4. So, you notice the pattern here. So, what will happen here? I have 2 power n of them, all of them I am going to replace with 1 by 2 power n plus 1. So, this dn is below a n and positive, okay. So, that is important. Now, this guy is easy to find convergence for, okay. Notice what I am going to do here. This 1 plus 1 by half is okay. What is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4? It is 1 by 2. What is 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8? 4 times 1 by 8, that is 1 by 2. This is 8 times 1 by 16, that is 1 by 2 again. This is likewise 2 power n times 1 by 2 power n plus 1, it is 1 by 2 again. So, I get this half by grouping larger and larger elements together, I keep getting this half which is going to be below my uh, series that I am interested in a n. Okay, this half is pretty big, right? It is going to keep contributing bigger and bigger sums even if you go far and far into the right. So, this sequence diverges, okay. So, this series, I am sorry, this series diverges, okay. So, half plus half plus half plus half, so on till infinity, right? That is going to diverge. So, it is a big number, okay. So, this series diverges. So, what I have managed to construct here is an absolutely, you know, very interesting, very non-trivial way of extending the comparison test, right. All I knew was this, this series will diverge. But then I took the harmonic series which looks very different from this, but I managed to group these things together and construct a divergent series below it, okay. So, now you can invoke the comparison test. A n is greater than or equal to d n greater than or equal to 0 and summation d n diverges. So, by comparison test, a n diverges. So, the harmonic series diverges as well, okay. Wonderful result. Important to remember the result. The proof is also simple enough in my opinion, but it is a little bit involved in the grouping and all that, okay. So, wonderful result to see, okay. So, now we can generalize this to an arbitrary q, okay. So, this summation 1 by n power q, uh, I am going to let q be any real number, okay. Not just, uh, you know, integer, I, I spoke about integer, but integers are special cases. Uh, n, n, n squared, n cubed and all are special cases, but q can be, you know, 1.01, .01, q can be 0.98, q can be 0.5, q can be 1.5, anything, any real number q is okay, okay. The previous result and this result are sort of similar. It says the series summation 1 by n power q, which is 1 plus 1 by 2 power q plus 1 by 3 power q. So, notice here, it's, uh, it's not 1 plus 1 by 2, 1 by 3 anymore. There is a power here, okay. So, this guy diverges if q is less than or equal to 1, okay. So, this is the result which is uh, very interesting. Uh, we will prove it uh, quite easily in, in a very similar way to the previous one. So, I am going to go through it very fast except that you will have these q powers floating around. You will see it is not too difficult. Again, the same grouping happens. Again, the same identification of a series below happens. I replace everything with for, by, the, by, a, by a smaller value right, a smaller value I am using to replace everything here and then I can again find each of these sums 1 plus 1 by 2 power q, 2 times 1 by 2 power 2 q, 2 squared times 1 by 3 power 3 q, okay, these are all just rewriting these things, right, 8 power q is 2 power 3 q and I have 4 of those, so it is 2 square times like that, okay, so all the way here I have 2 power n of these and 1 by 2 power n plus 1 into q, okay. So, this guy I can rewrite as 1 plus 1 by 2 power q plus 1 by 2 power q times 2 by 2 power q, okay. I hope you see that, right. So, 1 by 2 power q comes out and then you get 2 by 2 power q. Likewise, 1 by 2 power q comes and then you get 2 by 2 power q whole squared. So, these are term by term equal. I will let you check it. Uh, so, this is what you get. So, what you get here, I hope you can identify as a geometric series. Notice once again how from a series that is not geometric, this is not geometric at all, right? The common ratio here changes a lot. This ratio is 1 by 2 per q. This ratio is 2 per q by 3 per q. This ratio will be 3 per q by 4 per q. It changes a lot. But nevertheless, I am able to find a sequence, a series below a n which diverges, right? Oh, not this type, I am sorry, which, which is geometric, okay? So, a series 
below a n which is geometry. So, that is very very important. Once you find this guy, the convergence of this depends on 2 by 2 power q, right. If 2 by 2 power q is less than 1, this converges. But if 2 by 2 power q is greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, this sequence diverges, okay. When will 2 by 2 power q be greater than or equal to 1? When will this guy be greater than or equal to 1? When q is less than or equal to 1, okay. So, that is the main idea. So, if q is less than or equal to 1, my common ratio here 2 by 2 power q becomes greater than or equal to 1, okay. If q is less than or equal to 1, you can check that 2 by 2 power q will become greater than or equal to 1. So, once that happens, this dn diverges, summation dn diverges, so summation an also diverges, okay. So, this proof was a little bit more complicated, needed some more algebra, check this, but the principle is the same, okay. To show that this sequence, this series diverges, I find a geometric series below it term by term and then I you invoke conditions for when the geometric series diverges. Same as the previous result except that here we did something slightly different, okay. So, this is bad news, right. I keep saying it diverges, diverges. What happens if q is greater than 1? Here we get good news, okay. So, what is the good news? This series summation 1 by n power q actually converges if q is greater than 1, okay. So, once again the proof is again by comparison test, comparison to geometry, okay. But here we group slightly differently, okay. I will quickly walk you through, but uh, we will not spend too much time. But again comparison with a geometric series that converges in this case. But how do you do it? You group it slightly differently, okay. You keep 1 alone aside and then 2 power q and 3 power q you group together. And then start at 4 power q, go all the way to 1 by 7 power q, go 1 lesser. And then likewise all the way you start with a power of 2, then go to the next power of 2 minus 1, that raised to the power q, okay. So, you have 2 group of 2 here, group of 4 here, next one will be 1 by 8 power q to 1 by 15 power q, okay, 8 of them like that, okay. So, now we can build a CN which is above this and converges or converges, okay. So, that is the idea behind this proof. So, how do we get a series above this? Instead of the smaller value 1 by 3 power q, I am going to replace with a larger value 1 by 2 power q. Likewise, all these other guys here 1 by 5 power q, 6 power q, 7 power q, all of these I will replace by 1 by 4 power q. This is, this is the largest value in this group, right. In this group, this is the largest value. Replace every term by the largest value. Likewise, here in this group, this is the largest value. Replace every term by the largest value. So, you do that, you get a series, series C n which, which dominates a n, which is above a n. But this one actually you can is geometric, okay. Why is this geometric? You see here 1 plus 2 into 1 by 2 power q, 2 squared into 1 by 2 power 2 q, right. So, until 2 power n into 1 by 2 power n power q. This you may not immediately see is geometric, but it is actually geometric. So, 1 plus 2 by 2, 2 power q plus 2 by 2 power q whole squared plus so until 2 by 2 power q power n, okay. So, wonderful geometric series and then the same common ratio comes, right, 2 by 2 power q. I know how to find convergence for this. If q is greater than 1, then 2 by 2 power q goes less than 1 and this series converges. This series which is a geometric series converges for q greater than 1 and this series guess what is above a n, okay. Notice how this above and below played very interestingly, right. When I wanted to show divergence, I grouped differently and then I went below it and got a geometric series and I got a condition for it. Here, I want convergence, so I group slightly differently and I go above it and still I get a geometric series from which I derive convergence. So, C n converges if q is greater than 1. If q is greater than 1, 2 by 2 power q is less than 1, right. 2 power q if q is greater than 1 is greater than 2. So, this one will go less than 1 and by comparison test some a n converges if q is greater than 1, okay. So, this is the series 1 by n power q. So, notice how once again we started with the simple geometric series, we knew how it converges and then we are able to build on top of it using this comparison test idea. So, again the same thing, start with simple, build more complicated, build more complicated results from it, okay. So, visualization, you can see uh, the harmonic series 1 plus 1 by 2 plus so on to 1 by n and 1 plus 1 by 2 squared plus 1 by n squared. I know that this guy actually diverges, I know that this guy actually converges and if you do a stem plot, you can see that this hn is sort of the amount of growth is decreasing, but it is still sort of you know increasing slowly, slowly, but surely it is going off to infinity. But hn squared you notice it is like falling flat very quickly 
and uh, you know for sure that this will converge, right? So this will converge eventually. So two different sequences, two different series, very closely related, but behavior is very, very different. In fact, you don't have to go all the way to n squared, right? It's enough if you do n power 1.01. Even if you do n power 2 power 1.01, .01, n power 1.01, .01, this will converge and this will diverge, okay. So that's the interesting thing and you can do stem plots uh, to visualize these things, okay. Okay, so a couple of more ideas which connect the sequence a n and the series a n, okay. So, so far we saw that the sequence a n and series a n are sort of interestingly connected and here is that main, main result. If the series converges, then the sequence has to tend to 0, okay. So, this is an important result to know, okay. So, if summation a n converges, then a n tends to 0. So, this is like a mathematically precise statement. A lot of people get confused uh, by what this means and what it does not mean. I am going to explain that in some with some care. That is why I am putting it very carefully. So, if the series converges, then a n tends to 0, okay. The proof here is very easy, okay. So, you can write a n as s n minus s n minus 1. And simply take the limit as n tends to infinity, right. So, this will go to this some convergent value, this will go to some convergent value, if you subtract you will get 0 here and so a n will tend to 0, okay. So, it is very easy to show that if the series converges, then the sequence has to tend to 0. Equivalently, what is this equivalent, uh, equivalently, if the sequence does not converge to 0, then the series has to diverge, right. Supposing the sequence does not converge to 0, can the series converge? If the series converges, then this is a contradiction, no? The sequence has to tend to 0. So, this is also implied by this. So, these two statements turns out are equivalent, okay. A statement A implies statement B, not B implies not A, okay. These two are equivalent statements, they are not converses of the other, okay. So, keep be careful about it. So, if the limit of the sequence is non-zero, then the series will diverge. So, this can also be a useful rule, okay. You can find convergence of a series or divergence of a series by looking at the limit of the sequence. Limit of the sequence better be zero. If it is not zero, immediately the series will diverge. Now, what is the converse of this result? Converse is not true in this case. What is the converse? Sequence tends to zero does not imply series converges, okay. So, if a n tends to 0, the sequence is tending to 0, then the series may converge, may not converge. You can give counter examples here. So, here is uh, two examples, 1 by n tends to 0 and summation 1 by n diverges. We have proved that 1 by n square tends to 0 and summation 1 by n square converges. So, sequence tending to 0 may not imply anything about the series converging or diverging. However, if the series converges, then the sequence has to tend to 0, okay. So, this is one of those nice results where one direction is true, but the other direction is not true. A implies B, okay, that is the one statement. B implies A is the converse of that statement, okay. So, the converse here in this case is not true, okay. So, that is uh, the useful rule to have, okay. So, we will stop here in this uh, lecture, uh, but so far we have seen only the comparison test and this simple sequence limit test. Uh, to see if the series converges or diverges, but that alone is not enough. We need one more very powerful set of tests that is called the root test and ratio test. We will see that in the next lecture. Thank you.